Hi, my name is Nick Gelly. I'm from the University of Adelaide in South Australia. In this video abstract, I'd like to introduce you to our paper entitled Revegetation Rewilds Soil Bacteria Microbiome of an Old Field, published in the Journal of Molecular Ecology. Since the onset of agricultural practices 8,000 years ago, natural landscapes have been dramatically altered by humans. The Industrial Revolution, population growth and climate change have hastened this degradation and led to a biodiversity crisis. It's only in the past few decades that the global community has responded to this crisis and attempted to restore large tracts of degraded land, but there remain valid concerns that suboptimal restoration will jeopardise resilient project outcomes. A lack of consistent and objective monitoring is recognised as a common factor inhibiting project success, bringing into question our capacity to reach the enormous restoration targets set for the 21st century. To help empower practitioners with scalable monitoring tools for addressing these challenges, we explored the use of high throughput amplicon sequencing of environmental DNA in restoration. Our study site in South Australia was formerly an open eucalypt woodland, which was cleared for grazing a century ago. Active restoration of the site was undertaken in 2005. We analysed over 3 million quality fielded bacterial 16S RNA gene sequences from 48 technical replicates. These replicates were chosen from across the chronos sequence of restoration and controls, producing 3,316 OTUs, nine bacterial phyla dominated this data set. We observed a striking directional change in bacterial composition after only eight years of revegetation. Acidiobacteria and Firmicutes were the phyla that exhibited the greatest change in abundance across the revegetation chronosequence. sequence. We found that younger sites tended to be more similar to cleared sites, while older sites were more similar to remnant stands. The effects of restoration on soil bacterial communities is now better understood, having identified these trends in community change. We expect that with further work, this method holds great promise in deriving data for site viability, restoration efficacy, and even prescribing adaptive management options for current or failed projects. For more information on this and other projects, you can visit the Low Lab Group website or send us an email and we'll be pleased to get back to you.